Maximum effort. All right, we good? Cool. People just love them some Deadpool. They can't get enough DP. What is it? Is it his face? Is it the costume that lets you act like a douchebag at comic book conventions? Well, it's gotta be something because Deadpool fever is hotter than ever, maybe even terminal. So how can we get more Deadpool? Maybe decapitation can help. Cue the music. It's the highest grossing R-rated film of all time, but in case you're not aware, Deadpool is about a mutant who has nearly out of control regenerative capabilities. His healing factor is somewhat subdued. Go back to B-roll, what are you doing? Why are you looking at me? In the movie, but in the comics, it's the star of the show. Deadpool's powers are legendary enough that you guys can't seem to stop tweeting at me about them. Twitter user at SJS0394 asked, if Wolverine is beheaded, will his body grow a new head or will his head grow a new body? Well, because I'm also insanely jealous of Hugh Jackman, I decided to make this episode about Deadpool because they share a similar power. And I put the question to you, my lovely Twitter followers, follow me on Twitter to suggest future episodes for the show and stuff like that. And here's what you guys thought. Most of you think that if Deadpool was decapitated, two new Wade Wilsons would spring up. Well, let's go through it. First, let's see what the comic books have to say. Well, Deadpool has been decapitated, like, a lot. Hulk even exploded his head one time, but what happens next isn't quite so clear. Sometimes his body grows a new head, or his head needs to be reattached to his body so that he can survive, and sometimes a bunch of severed libs all come together uh, to form an evil version of Deadpool. So not a whole lot of clear answers in the comics. Whatever would really happen here, it's gonna deal with Deadpool's regeneration factor, which we likened on a previous Because Science to this little dude, the Axolotl. It can regrow any number of its limbs and eyes and parts of its brain any number of times without scarring. It's a real life Deadpool and this is a real katana. They don't let me bring it into the office. <laughs> if Deadpool's closest analog is a little salamander, what are the real limits of regeneration? The axolotl is legitimately amazing, but its regeneration abilities have limits. The first is time. Even though an axolotl can regrow an entire limb or an entire eye, it can take many months to do so. I'm still working on this tiny hand. The second factor is resources. The cells that make up a new eye or new limb have to come from somewhere and they use a lot of the body's energy. Next, immunity. A gaping wound is going to get infected without expert care and so an axolotl may die before it even has time to regenerate what it's lost. Lastly, specificity. Not every single part of the axolotl can regenerate so it really does matter what it loses. <sighs> I mean, if I get another one of those Game Theory Did It First comments on this video, I... Oh! Now we can apply these limits to Deadpool and answer the question at tiny hand. So if you decapitate Deadpool, what might happen realistically? Well, his immunity probably isn't a problem having a healing factor derived from Wolverine, and Wolverine is pretty resistant to diseases and infections and stuff like that. And specificity is hard to say because uh, salamander guts are pretty different than our own. Time and resources are another story. Thanos curses and comic book story arcs be damned, Deadpool would be dead if he got decapitated. There's simply not enough time for either his body or his head to regrow another part of itself before it would either bleed out, lose oxygen flow, or just kind of uh, start decomposing instantaneously. If a tiny hand takes a few days to regenerate, then a whole head it's gonna take two, he's, he's a dead man. And if Deadpool didn't die from the time it takes to regenerate, what about the resources? There are simply not enough cells in your head to recruit to make a whole new body out of. Now, to be fair, the resources problem at least seems apparent to Marvel. I know this because I asked them. No, seriously. Here's Jordan White, one of the editors on the Deadpool series. 
Uh, that is a tough call, Kyle. I would say that the existence of evil Deadpool suggests that the body would regrow a head, so my best guess is that when he is hurt and damaged, the biggest piece that is left over is the one that regrows the rest of his body. So if his entire body is atomized except for his hand, the hand would regrow back the rest of him. But if it's body versus head, then the body will regrow it. Except that I just remembered the part in Axis where he had just Wade's head and it kept talking after being cut off, so I think the real answer is that we are inconsistent. Well, at least you're being honest, Jordan. I think it works out for the most part until you get down to the really, really small parts of Deadpool that are supposed to regrow the rest of him for uh, reasons that we discussed. So that answers part of our question. According to the comics, Deadpool's head might regrow a new body, and his body might regrow a new head, but realistically, I don't think he'll have either the time or the resources to do so. Unexpected Katana! I know that I'm directly conflicting with the comics here, but unlike some science communicators, just debunking something isn't what I enjoy doing. So instead, knowing what we know about regeneration, what is the largest fraction of Deadpool that we could cut off and he could grow back from? Since we still need specific organs and resources and time, I'm gonna say about here or a little under half. That way Deadpool would still have half a brain and a heart and most of his guts to work with. You could also cut about here on his midsection and that would still work for the same reasons that we just outlined, but it's still around 50, 60%, so I think that's fine. If taken care of and given enough time, these two halves of Deadpool might in fact regrow into two functional Mercury mouths, but separately, separate halves. I don't really see a way, unlike the comic books, to create two Deadpools just by cutting him in half a certain way. I don't think you can get infinite Deadpools. Hashtag infinite DP. So you decapitate Deadpool, what happens? Well, from what we know from nature's closest analog to Deadpool, the axolotl, he'd probably die. His head wouldn't have enough resources to create a whole new body and his body would stop getting those, you know, don't die instructions from the brain. But giving benefit of the doubt to Deadpool, there is probably a way you can cut him in half and he will survive. But that's just a theory. Uh, because science. Thank you so much for watching. You could pick up Thor's hammer in space. Uh, for the same reason, in a previous episode, uh, we discussed why Kylo Ren or another Jedi or Sith might be able to move Thor's hammer because it's just exerting a force on it and it's not trying to wield it. Uh, you, if you took Thor's hammer to space, if he took it there for you, and he left it, then you'd be able to move it. You'd be able to physically move it. But because you're not wielding the hammer, you wouldn't get the powers. You wouldn't get the lightning and the armor and stuff like that. But take it out to space and you could you could push it, you could you could tap Thor's hammer a little bit. So a lot of you guys have been asking me how I actually draw uh, with my different hands for this show and, and, and how we edit it and stuff like that. Uh, and enough of you asked, and this is Deadpool, so break the fourth wall, right? Um, so here's how we do it. So the first thing I do,